So what we have here is a maple syrup jaw. Crazy, right? So this is basically a resurrection jar, a mini ecosphere, aquatic terrarium. I mean, whatever you want to call it, it is what it is. It is a tiny living, sustaining ecosystem. I would say self-sustaining, but some people have a problem with that because you do need light. I use a mini grow light with this, um, with this little jar, I need a grow light that helps create oxygen. You'll see over here, there is tiny hair-like algae. And I think that is what's creating enough oxygen inside this jar for this little tiny life to thrive. We have tiny little um, aquatic invertebrates kind of floating around. They are incredible. I've also noticed on the side, just on the surface of the glass, just over here, here, and a few other spots that there are these tiny, almost like hydra slash stent or living creatures that respond to movement in the water. And they capture tiny little single cell organisms and potentially bacteria that they probably feed on. They're kind of like freshwater um, sea anemones. Pretty fascinating. This actual maple jar, this jar is about six months old now, and I haven't taken that cork off for anything, to be honest. I haven't put more water in. I collected this water in in Florida. When I was living in Florida, I, co I collected a bunch of water and basically some sta sand and sticks, a couple of living plants, <clears throat> just put the lid on and uh, six months six months later, this is what it looks like. Pretty fascinating. Let me get a little close up for you guys. <laughs> I just wanna do a quick shout out to uh, the new subscribers. The channel went from like 700 to 2000 pretty quickly after that this jar um, so I figured I'd like to make a little bit more of a long format content for this jar and explain how I did it but I want to say a thank you and uh, welcome I'll be making some more cool projects like this in fact there is a a whiskey bottle that I have at the back let me just try and pan over see there is a whiskey jar that little whiskey bottle is a Sagamore rye and I obviously finished the whiskey, but I'm turning that into a similar ecosphere that I have here with the maple jar. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna transplant some of this life from this jar into that jar and just to see whether or not they survive and if it can actually be done. So if you're into this sort of stuff, please like, subscribe and uh, keep updated because I'll be doing a few cool experiments with these jars and um, it's just fun. So it's nothing serious. I am not a biologist. I am just a curious mind. So if you're into that sort of stuff, please like, hit the thumbs up, show some love, and um, hopefully one day this channel can move so I can actually afford maybe a 4K camera in the future. I'm, I'm running 1080 uh, with a Canon EOS M50, so it's an old vlogging camera. It's still beautiful. I mean, look at the, the quality that you still get. It's 1080. It's still good enough if you're starting out or you want to do something similar to this. Um, you know, I take a lot of inspiration from people online. YouTube's an incredible place to, to learn and, and figure cool stuff out. And if you're adventurous and you, and you like to do experiments with nature, not harmful, just fun, um, you know, drop a comment and let me know. Uh, and and give, me some, give me some inspiration and some ideas of some stuff you might want to see or might want to try. I'm, I'm down to try anything out with this channel. Uh, you will see at the back again, let me pan over. So at the back by my other jars, you'll see in the back corner that test tube 
If you've seen a couple of my shorts, you will know that I'm experimenting with this test tube. It's got a bunch of parsley, parsley sprouts growing in there, but it's actually filled up with water. And I wanted to make sure that that something happened because I think with this parsley's not supposed to grow underwater, but it it seems to be kind of dying slowly. But that's the point. I want it to die so I can actually film what actually happens inside there. So there will be an update to that on the short and maybe I'll make a long format content on that too. But it is looking cool right now. So that's an example of the this type of stuff I like to get into. Now back to the maple jar. I'm going to switch over to the macro lens. Now I've had a lot of questions uh, about this specific jar and those that are actually interested in making it. Number one, I didn't use a lot of mud. So when I collected the sample, I, I, I was lucky enough in the fresh water that I collected, uh, the lake had more of a sandy edge than a muddy swampy edge, if that makes sense. So I picked up a little bit of the sand, which I've found out online that typically resurrection jars, which this is kind of like a mini resurrection jar, in the aquatic industry, they would use resurrection jars to basically breed Daphnia and smaller invertebrates, um, aquatic invertebrates like these that you see swimming around. And they would breed them to feed their, their fish. So live fish food, basically. <clears throat> and that's what, that's where resurrection jars kind of became popular. Uh, I've found it pretty fascinating when I saw the, um, the videos on the resurrection jars because it actually gave me so much inspiration to try and create like a miniature version of it so i found this maple jar and it was almost the perfect type of jar for it and yeah it's pretty cool so back to the the original point of that conversation um, was that you do not want to add a lot of mud inside a resurrection jar because what happened well what will happen is there's a lot of living uh, decaying matter and um, a lot of bacteria and a lot of other nasty things that can foul the jar over time so if it's too muddy and got way too much other nasty bacteria you might just have a problem and you, it won't clarify and you know you'll you'll have less oxygen I guess because the plants won't be able to grow so to kind of balance it out you want to have a couple of things like make sure you have some some form of algae I know that it will overgrow one day um, you can see the side of the walls over here at the back have this hair algae kind of growing on it but I'm gonna leave it for now but if I have to wipe it down and, and, and scrub it down I will I'm not too worried about that and um, I can I can clean it up with one of these so I personally made um, basically window cleaning sticks and that help they help to kind of go down and clean but i don't want to clean now because these little creatures are living and thriving on the side of the glass so i'll hold off for quite a while before i even think about trying to clean this jar but it's six months in and i don't really need to clean it now i do clean the outside with a microfiber so i'll just keep it nice and polished nice and clean and honestly what I do want to try and do in the future is I want one of these for like my daughter by the time she's like two years old or somewhere in the future where she's you know more conscious of of her surroundings to be able to have this as like a little lamp in her bedroom she'd become fascinated with um the natural world, the, the natural world next to every day. Now, for those that think that this, this is a cruel experiment, I'm totally sorry that you're offended by me capturing some, some lake water and putting it into a jar and, and studying what happens. There's a lot of people that love what I've done here and uh, I personally do love it. So if you're offended by it, I do apologize, you know, this is not the channel for you. It's, uh, it's a bunch of water inside a jar. 
But for those that subscribe because they do like this, if you really need help with trying to do one of these, <clears throat> you know, drop me a message. All I can say is try and try to have some sort of decaying sticks or leaves that helps create the biofilm that some of the smaller invertebrates and creatures feed off and creates a little ecosystem that helps, uh, helps everyone kind of thrive. You need everything to kind of work symbiotically inside here. So, and I'm, I might be lucky. I might be lucky that this turned out so good because sometimes they just might not look like this. And if they do just empty it out, try again, maybe add less of debris and make sure that the sun there's no direct sunlight and that is a super important thing no i'd never put this in direct sunlight if you see at the back over here you'll see there i've got some what of a grow light a mini grow light on top of my um moss rock wall jar and it's it's such low light but it's enough grow light and a lot, there's enough light spectrum in that to allow this algae to kind of grow and thrive so I never put it in direct light direct light would just kill uh, and uh, cook the jar so pointers no no direct sunlight make sure that you don't have a lot of mud and nasty fouling sort of uh, debris make sure you try and get some form of living green uh, and a stick or two just for visual. It looks pretty awesome to have extra stuff inside the jar. And if you're really interested in how this specific jar was made, go look, I have a couple of shorts on my short feed that uh, the number one where I got this jar from, how I cleaned the, the label off, then made the jar, filled it up. It actually broke once. I managed to save as much as I could and put it back into the jar with some distilled water. That didn't help that much uh, I, I had to refill it up in the same area that I got it from but kept the main sticks and and plants that I found just filled it up with the water again and ever since six months later this is what it looks like there's a cool view a little bit further back and you get to see them swimming around and having a time so that little underwater plant is actually kind of floating free it sinks every now and then and then floats back up I think when the when the oxygen bubbles kind of form it kind of pulls itself back up to the top and floats and I've captured some of these little aquatic creatures like hitching a ride which is pretty cool to see they, they play around with it that's for sure now I want to address the, the some of the concerning comments from the previous short video that I had that said that you know I've, I've taken nature out of its environment and it's it's basically torturing them and it's a, it's it's abuse to these little creatures and now if you do honestly feel that way I, I, I apologize I do hope that you would see that there's a bigger picture here one I get to learn some cool stuff about nature because I do absolutely love nature and two, like I said, when my daughter's old enough to start recognizing these cool things, it's going to be, it's going to be fun to have these moments with her. It's basically a mini, miniature fish tank, so don't be too offended by it. It's, it's literally just a, a bit of water inside a maple jar, and I think, I think those that want to try it should try it. It is so much fun. I get to have this mini miniature fish tank next to my computer while I do editing, chill out, and it's, it's absolutely stunning. That's the honest truth. 